Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, PaintballProps.com, and ElectronicLessons.com. This is a, a new gadget I received in today. I received a bunch of these in. It's an electromagnetic fuse for uh, cabinets and doors. It's very small. Requires 12 volts at 100 milliamps. Actually, I digress. It's, the specification says 100 milliamps, but it only takes about 50 milliamps from my first impressions of it. It's rated for uh, 100 kilograms. At least that's what the supplier says. This is the electromagnet. This is the electromagnetic bracket, which is removable. We'll do that in a minute. And this is the mounting bracket. Flat side for the electromagnet, graded side for mounting. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see right now, nothing. Just put that on there in place. I'll apply 12 volts. And bingo. And I'll remove 12 volts. And it comes right off. So, uh, it's got a red wire and a black wire. Black wire is DC ground, red wire is 12 volts DC, and it comes with a washer, a large screw. I've got no idea what this is called. In fact, I'm going to uh, suggest that if you end up purchasing one of these at any point, you don't use this. Uh, it's got two large screws for the uh, electromagnetic bracket, and it's got two little black spacers. So let's try to figure out the mounting of this together. Okay, so I've removed my power supply connections just to make things a little bit easier. You'll notice there's two screws right here. That will remove, if you loosen these, it will remove the, uh, I'll offer you to remove the electromagnet mounting brackets from the electromagnet. Now I'm just gonna loosen them. I'm not going to remove the screws, I'm just going to loosen them and pull off the electromagnet. I'll put that back here for a minute. Now what you would wanna do is you would wanna use these two screws and mount this to the inside of your door using either of the either either any of the two provided holes and once that's mounted you would then take the electromagnet and connect it back in place on the inside of your door or cabinet easy peasy and you can do that with the wires on the top or the wires on the bottom doesn't make a difference so let's just pretend that's mounted on the inside of your door. You'd have to mount it back from back a little bit so that when the door closes, this bracket will make contact with the electromagnet. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Now, I'm an electronics guy. I'm not a mechanically inclined guy. So uh, the instructions for this are very ambiguous, not very useful, but I've been able to gather a little bit from it. Hopefully, uh, you'll take some advice that I've come up with and ignore these components right here. But I'll talk more about those in a minute anyway. So we've used these two screws to mount the electromagnet bracket to the inside of your door. Now you have to mount this to the door itself so that when it closes, it actually, the cabinet closes naturally and this, um, and this uh, bracket makes perfect contact with the electromagnet. So remember, you have to use the flat side to touch the electromagnet, not the graded side. All right, now these two spacers, uh, they're essentially, I'm trying to see, see if you can get a good look at this. There's a little gap in the middle. And that means that when you tap them into place on the top and bottom holes, you use a little hammer and you tap those in uh, about a half a centimeter, that little gap closes so that it fits in place perfectly. From there, you've got two spacers uh, standing out a little bit. Then what you would do is you would connect this as you want it to the electromagnet Apply power again so it stays on its own. And then what you do is you would close the door, you'd bang the door closed on those two spacers. And that would leave two marks on your, uh, that would leave two marks on your cabinet. So then you'd remove power from the electromagnet, uh, allowing for the, um, for the bracket to come off. And you'd be, you'd have two marks left on your cabinet door, at which point you would drill in just about a half a centimeter, as much of the space that you have left. So then you could use the spacers that are in there. Let's see if I can, if I can uh, get one of these in here. My, I don't have a hammer with me, and I didn't want to do this because I wanted to save this hardware. This is a plastic head, I don't know if, I'm just gonna pretend like I have those in. So you drill small holes into the door where those two marks were left, so that you could actually line it up and push it into place, so that it's flush. From there, you're left with one large hole. Now, I have no idea what this, um, what this uh, washer is for, so I'm going to put that aside. Again, perhaps you, uh, my suggestion here is not going to include these either. This screw goes nicely into the 
uh, flat side, comes out the grated side. Now you'd have to drill another hole right through the, uh, the cabinet door for this. Now maybe this is for a door, but I imagine most people would be using the small unit on a cabinet, in which case you wouldn't want to use this setup. You'd want to use something else, in which case You've got this set in place. Everything's flush, everything's hunky-dory, your, your two spacers are in the bracket, they're in the door. Then what you need is you need a large screw that is about half the size for a cabinet door, maybe even less, and has a point to it so that you can actually screw it into the door, fastening it in place. At which point, every time you open to close the door, it lines up perfectly. And then, you'd obviously have your control circuitry uh, on the inside of the uh, of the cabinet. For an escape room, you'd have, I don't know, a Tangram box, and I'm actually going to show off a Tangram box in the next video, uh, or you'd have a combination lock on the outside, you'd have, there's so many different possibilities, an RFID unit, we have the, we have the means to do all of that. Again, check us out at paintballprops.com if you're interested in escape room props, because I do custom work. Uh, in any case, I'm not, never going to, going to be using these two pieces of hardware. I'm going to find my own screw for this because it makes things a heck of a lot simpler. These two spacers are very important in lining up the, in, in helping to line up the, uh, the bracket to the door and ensuring that that's uh, in parallel and, con and connect connected every time the door closes properly to the electromagnet. So it's very easy. Um, and for someone who, for any of, I imagine most of you, if not all of you, have a better idea of what you're doing when it comes to mechanical. Because I'm good at electronics, I love electronics, electronics is my life, but mechanical, I don't know, my ass from my elbow. So, in any case, uh, it's a really, really, really neat little unit. I'll show it off just one more time. I realize the, the video is going a little bit long here, but uh, I really, really think it's neat. I've been hoping to get my hands on some of these for quite a long time. So I'll just power it up. And... Boom, and it's it's now on there solid. So I'll remove power, and it just falls off. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, and maybe by looking at this, you come up with your own ideas. I'm I'm sure. And uh, but it's really really a lot of fun to play with, and it's uh, and really I imagine that once I mount this into a prop, it's going to work easy peasy. I know it's real it's uh, it's a reliable unit. Just the mounting it might be a bit of a pain. Have a great day, guys. Visit us at paintballprops.com, electroniclessons.com, and engineeringshock.com.